Now we were talking about murderers murdering you, and if that makes them happy, that's all right. Right. But then you got to wonder on the flip side. Well, about the people's family and loved ones that you right. murder, or they come after you. Yeah. Because that's gonna make them happy. To kill you. Right. Is that your question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you think the society could live in anarchy? Mm -hmm. uh, well, in, equal balance. In a way, all all security, all freedoms, all is an illusion. Because it is anarchy. That's right. You have to deal with nature as is. And okay. Good morning. This is lunch. Hey. Morning. Shit. What time is it? One. Late lunch. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you was allowed to do anything you want, you could go out and just kill people. You know, anybody gets in your way. If you want to do little children, you should be able to have sex with them, like priests do. Now, you think the ones that were the priests would be the last to do it, but I think it's being celibate all their life. It just the jizz rises in their head until they fucking can't think anymore and they think it's all right. The jizz rises in their head. But think about the poor kids that the last thing they hear before they get fucked in the ass is the preacher saying, God wants you to do this for me. What sick individuals. So that pretty well proves the point that really humans can do anything they want. There is no earthly retribution. Had to look down, make sure, you know, I thought shit was going to happen. If we're getting hit with lightning for this show, I'm going to be on my knees praying to God. <laughs> and, but is he going to save us this time? Which brings us to an important point. Today is June 30th. Right? Didn't I say that was the end of the world? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we're still here. We're doing a lunch show. So we're not having asteroids, right? Asteroids are not supposed to hit till when September 27th. Oh, wait, it was June 30th, man. I know it was, wasn't it? I thought we were all going to at least know that we were going to die by June 30th. Right. I thought that was like uh, June 17th. Yeah, well, the first signs, and there was an increase in meteorites. And the day ain't over yet. You know, we still got most of the day. This might be our last show. <laughs> but, uh, this might be our last show. I don't, you know, I don't think it's going to end. They haven't put anything on the news. There's nobody running around with their hair on fire. So we ain't going to die, I don't think. Knock on wood, motherfucker. I got to drive home with these crazy asses. Exactly. Imagine what would happen if everybody got in their car at the same time tried to drive on these roads. You ain't going nowhere. It'd be an instant parking lot. You'd be better off driving old wagon trails and shit in the woods. There was a milk truck that dumped on 69 South today right at the Verizon. Did you have to drive through some milk, did you? A coupon for a lawn ticket to kiss and poison Saturday, July 3rd. Are you going? Must be redeemed for a ticket on the day of the show only. Huh. We're going to get blood again, get Patty a ticket too? Doesn't that look pretty easy to copy, Jay? Yeah. Yellow paper, it's very hard to come by. That's their own personal yellow. Okay, now i got to rewind this tape twice to try to figure out what the hell we were talking about. Oh, yeah, the end of the world. What are we going to do today, Pinky? Same thing we do every day. We're going to take over the world. How are we going to take over the world? Ideas. There you go. That's the answer. In the background, we're listening to... you got uh, all the answers, Jay. It, they're talking to Lila Lipscomb on uh, Air America there, you know, from uh, Fahrenheit 9-11, the mother. Yeah. Man, I, you know, she seems like a down-to-earth real person, I'll tell you what. She made me cry. She made, she's got a point. 
She's pissed as hell. I ain't gonna take it no more. How much money does she make off that movie? Zero. Not a dollar. Bullshit. You think she get paid? This year marks the 100th anniversary you do? Of and we to I don't think so. Way to this That'd be a good question. Let's let's call it. Well, who do we ask? There's no way to research that. We'll just ask Michael. How much did you pay her to say these bad things about George? So is the goddamn government over yet? Have you seen that one guy that does uh, bowling for Michael Moore? Yeah, yeah, he's coming up with a new movie, isn't he? It's going to say well, all the bad things about Michael Moore. Because they can't attack the truth of what his documentary says. It's better to attack the person. That's Republican politics at its finest. Speaking of that, you know that Monday, Sunday night, Bremer left the country and just threw him the keys and then signed off and let him have the country. And now they got Saddam and everything. Do you think we could get George to leave the country this weekend? And, you know, like, if he leaves the country, can we, like, not let him back in? Um, Wouldn't that be the perfect time? We'll wait for him to leave the country. Jake. And we won't let him back in anymore. Now, are the Iraqis going to buy the fact that they're free now that Bremer's gone? The street Iraqis are saying that the uh, head guy, I still don't know his name, is CIA. That's the buzz. They all know he's CIA. I mean, shit. The president of Afghanistan's really just the fucking mayor of Kabul. You know, he don't have no land. He ain't in charge of no country. They're lucky they control the city. They got 10,000 fucking soldiers there. And then they sent some of them to Iraq as the Afghan army. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to take over this country this weekend. Pass it on. Pass it on. <laughs> We're taking back. That's what Michael Moore said. He said, they asked him what it was, and he said it's a... Uh, not a precursor, but something like that mm -hmm. to the rebellion. That's what his movie is, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the opening, the uh, preamble to the rebellion. In a way, that's the only way we're ever going to get all the soldiers home. And I'm a pacifist. Most of the people that are in the peace movement are pacifists. I find it hard to believe in the clashes between the police and the pacifists. The police don't have a little bit to do with it. You know? I'm a pacifist. Well, yeah, but, but see, I've seen just as many fucking stinky hippies be dickheads. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, they got a mouth on them, but guess what? This country, we're allowed to say what we no, want. No, even violence. They do it themselves, man. <laughs> they bring it on themselves. So. I've seen, you've seen them, man. Well. Here's my peaceful movement. I'm going to block you from getting into your... They're going to lay down right. in front of the road. Right. They're going to lay down. I've seen them hit by ammunition trains. They were going to stop a train. Well, guess what? They don't stop the trains for peace movement people anymore. They run them over. So, what's the moral to that story? Well, there's one way to bring our soldiers home, and that's if they have to fight their own people. If the powers that be feel threatened at home, they will call back the palace guard. They will get the Gestapo out on the people. The brown shirts, as known by the Jews, will be rampant. And they're going to be on us. And what do you do when they're fighting bullets? You fight bullets with bullets. What could happen if we really had... Are you going to go out and buy a gun, Jay? I think it's time. <laughs> But if it gets tired. My BB gun is not gonna have a shitload of an effect. You know, Do you I'm good in the right to bear arms. Jay? Bare arms, bare legs, bare bodies, bare bosoms. I believe in bare everything. Barely. Barely legal. Oh, I forgot substring no again today. We were the yeah, you didn't bring it in or you got it in the car. Well, I finally figured out karaoke. 
Yes. The first CD I made, the words didn't work. And this one I think does. You can make a karaoke song out of any song? No. Yeah, somebody had to buy the karaoke song or make it for, I don't know that part of it. But it comes uploaded to the news group ready to burn. A song without lyrics and then the lyrics on a print sheet that runs. And so I got that down. I'm now a karaoke master. Want to try some karaoke? No. No. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> uh, karaoke. What time has it got? It's got to be 105. You got a few more minutes. Yeah. I'll torch you a little bit. Oh, I got homework. Shit. Let's see what's up. My docs got Letterman last night. I think he did something funny. Yeah, but that's not the point. Big Brother update. Let's see. Marco Nick. Uh, what's that homo's name? Nick. Nicole and Michelle are up for eviction. That's the news. Modified, modified. Channel 6, does that look right? Nope. Back further. Is Letterman still slamming on Bush? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And in fact, that's probably what we'll finish the show with is that he had Wilson on last night. That's my new logo for the Big Brother that I'm going to put on my. What the hell is it? An eyeball? Yeah, let me blow it up here a little bit. It's got to be small, so that's only 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Um, when David Brock joins us to throw a monkey wrench into the Republican spin machine. Channel 8 has got to be let on. Yeah, how he reacted, uh, reacted after the attacks of 9-11 uh, and so on and so forth. Here we go, number 10. Uh, that actor who played the president was totally unconvincing. Number 9. <laughs> Top complaints the about Fahrenheit 9-11. Too many of them fancy college boy words. Number seven. If Michael Moore had waited a few more months, see, he would have included the part where I get him deported. Number six. Shot. <laughs> Killed. One of them hilarious monkeys who smoke cigarettes and gives people the finger. Number five. <laughs> All Michael Moore's accusations, only 97% are true. Uh, number four, not sure I passed out after a piece of popcorn lodged in my windpipe. Number three. Where the hell was Spider-Man, number two? <laughs> most of the movie over Cheney's foul mouth. And the number one Bush complaint about the Fahrenheit 9-11, I thought this was supposed to be about dodgeball. Dodgeball. This is one of his most embarrassing moments. Not really. He's had lots worse than this. <laughs> what an idiot. Always thinking. Put it on his feet. And, and you know, uh, after the conventions, uh, we believe now that the Democratic he candidate tried to hold against the George anyway. W. Bush yeah. was John Kerry. <laughs> he couldn't do it. He realized, I'm never going to do it. I can't yeah. get out of and it. It's going to be deadly at this stage of the campaign. It's so early in the campaign. Exactly. He's, He's supposed to put him on there. Though. You know, it's like the French thing, Medal of Honor. That's the highest honor. He's supposed to be able to pin it. He's never tried to do it before. He didn't know how. now caught in a lie. Look at this. John Kerry's lie. I can be uh, as footloose and fancy free and crazy as the next guy and go out and have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that might be a lie. He looks like a crazy guy, doesn't he? Oh, it's right on video tape. I don't know. Oh, yeah, he's a regular Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can be as crazy as the next guy. Hey. There's nothing to this allegation. The next day, the White House said that the 16 words, which were the phrase in the State of the Union address that the President that referred to that, uh, did not uh, rise to the level of inclusion in the State of the Union address. So they basically mm. acknowledged that, yes, 
this allegation should never have been the State of the Union address. Yeah, it's, it's oh, yellow yeah, cake lies. They, uh, <laughs> uh, they uh, oh, uh, buy blocks of yellow cake, throw it around, around the city hall and stuff. The it's office. time to end right. this shit. And, and, and that was by way of embarrassing, or paying you back for the embarrassment of calling them on a, a misstatement of the State of the Union. What was the motive for exposing your wife? Well, I always assumed that it was a it was a logical act. I assumed that my government would act rationally, and how, however despicable it might be, it was done essentially to discourage others from coming forward. There were a number of people who were talking at that time about the pressure they felt when the vice president came out to the CIA and talked to analysts at that level, uh, and so I assumed it was to discourage others from coming forward. A couple of months later, somebody leaked to <coughs> the administration that it was pure revenge. And is there, yeah. is, is there a different way to look at this? Is there a, a better view of this? Is there a different light to cast this in? Or is it pretty much as grim as it sounds? Well, I don't think there's a benign way of looking at it. Uh, even if I went a monopoly on the use of force, and this government is under to the end here. various factions and militias throughout the country, and not having given them the reason I wanted this book to come out this year is because it is an election year. The president said he wants to run on his record, and I believe that there's some things that I have to add to the public's understanding of the record. Uh, they won't be terribly positive to the president. They certainly won't be positive to the policy that he's embarked upon towards Iraq and towards the Middle East. And did you see him being reelected? Or no? um, not if I can help it. Uh, not if I can help it. Hell no. That's the scandal there that'll probably bring his ass down. They gonna kill him? They can't. He's too big. Ambassador Joseph Wilson? Uh, you don't get an ambassadorship for being nothing. And he was ambassador before Bush. And his wife was a long-time CAA. Long-time knock. A non-official mm -hmm. spy. I don't know what the C stands for. That's why I had to say spy. But they had put her in a company. They had made a CIA company up. They had all the employees for that company or CIA. The uh, guy that was her boss there is her handler agent. At the CIA, he's had to resign. The whole company's ineffective. And this is at a time when we want to know whether Iran has nukes or not, and if they're making nuclear bombs. This was the lady that would have been able to go in as a spy and find out on company business. So they not only outed somebody, but they might have outed the most important spy we have. Who and knows? President Bush had to get himself a criminal lawyer for this one because I think only the presidents get to see these lists of who the Knox are. I don't think Karl Rove even gets to see Knox lists. And God, I'm scared that they know the other ones and they're ready to out them. You know, Saddam's probably a Knox. He was set up in the country by the CIA, you know? I'm pretty sure, almost positive, that Noriega in Panama, before they took him down, he was a CIA agent right up to the end. He went to become a rogue agent, and rogue agent, and boom. So, man, it's just like every goddamn thing they do, they do wrong. This one's criminal. How do you know it's wrong? Maybe that's exactly what they want to do. They do what they want to do. How how else could Cheney go on to the floor of the Senate and tell another senator who's questioning him about Halberton to go fuck himself? We're allowed to say it on our show. I love that. He said go fuck himself. <laughs> he said to go fuck himself on the yeah. Senate floor. Take your penis, stick it up your ass, and if you don't like that, that's, go fuck yourself. That's almost like going to the pew and telling God to get fucked, isn't it? Well, it is worse than church because there is regulations and penalties for bad behavior and ungentlemanlike behavior on the floor of the Senate. Their only argument is, well, they weren't in session. It was a photo opportunity. It seems like that would be Senate business, that he'd have to follow the rules of the Senate during Senate business. Well, period. Uh, they were talking about Senate business. He was mm -hmm. asking him about his corrupt little fucking things going on he said go fuck yourself and these are the people that were going to bring honor dignity and you know respect. respect back to the discourse they've done that they've totally fucking 
the presidency is just, it should just be like a lower commissioner or something now. We shouldn't even, we should just let Congress run it. Get rid of the Supreme Court we got now, rehire real justices, some real jurors, not fucking, you know, political hacks. You know, I, right now I am in contempt of the Supreme Court, but damn, you know, what have they had for us but contempt? Right? Um, You're on it, Jay. I'm sick of them. Let's kill them. <laughs> Let's kill them. Let's kill them. Meanwhile, in Big Brother in a week, we're going to have, today, they should be telling who's on Big Brother, show pictures of the house, pick up all the logos. There you go. I'm It'll be here. a Big Brother day. Oh, yeah. no. It's kind of funny, my favorite show's Big Brother, and now I'm fighting against the real Big Brother. And I'm railing. So, you're out, huh? I'm sure there was one more. Trash bag. Ah, trash day was yesterday, so that's the reason. See you, Jay. Hang on one second. Why? This is better. <laughs> this is better than leaving. Yeah. I think. What is it? is about to begin. You've also heard from the supporters, but what about the man himself? In the past hour, our Washington correspondent, Carol Coleman, interview. And I think it's right about here it gets good. An exclusive interview. This is the interview. They, they didn't agree with my decision. They did vote for the U.S. Security Council. With an Irish uh, disclosed disarm show for facing this country. Show us. We just had a difference yeah. of opinion. Are you sure? When you say something, do you mean Okay. That was our close-up then. No doubt in my mind, President Chirac would like to see a free and democratic and whole Iraq emerge. And the uh, same in Afghanistan. They've been, they've been very helpful in Afghanistan. They're willing to forgive debt in Iraq. But most European She's countries being are rude right now. And, and, and are participating We're going to see how rude she gets. And how do you see the handover going? The next few weeks are going to be crucial. Can democracy really flourish with the violence that's going on? A hundred Iraqis dead today, Mr. President. Yeah, no, I, I don't like death either. I mean, you keep emphasizing the death, and I don't blame you. But all that goes to show is the nature of the. I don't blame you. These people are willing to kill innocent people, they're willing to slaughter innocent people to stop the advance of freedom and so the free world has to make a choice do we cower in the face of terror or do we lead in the face of terror and uh, I, uh, I'm going to lead in the face of terror we will not let these terrorists dash the hopes and ambitions terror of the people terrorists of Iraq. there's some kind of attitude that says oh gosh the terrorists attack let's terrorists. let the Iraqis suffer more and we're not going to let them suffer more we're going to work with them and I'm most proud of this fellow uh, Prime Minister Alawi He's strong and he's tough. He says to me, CIA, Mr. President, don't yeah. leave our country. Help us secure our country so we can be free. Indeed, Mr. President, just to, just to get back to that. Um, Let's get back to the question. To the Middle East. Sure. Um, you are, will be discussing at the EU summit um, the idea of bringing democracy to the broader, broader Middle East. Right. Um, is that something that really should start, though, with the solving of the Israeli-Palestinian crisis? Well, I think, first of all, you've got a, a, a democracy in Turkey. You've got a democracy in Afghanistan. you got a democracy in Pakistan. But it shouldn't that be on the top of please. the list? No, this is it. Please, for that. Okay. It would be better if you let me finish my answers and then, and then you can follow up if you don't mind. Uh, and, and what I'm telling you is that democracy can emerge at the same time that a democracy can emerge in the Palestinian state. I'm the first American president to have called for the establishment of a Palestinian state. The first one to do so, because I believe it is in the Palestinian people's interest. I believe it's in Israel's interest. And yes, we're working, but we can do more than, uh, you know, one thing. She sound time. rude to you? And we are working on the roadmap with, uh, uh, with the quartet to advance the process down the road. Uh, like Iraq, uh, the Palestinian and the Israeli issue is going to require good security measures. Is <laughs> more even-handedness from America? And we're working on security. <laughs> didn't even answer. In America, I'm the first president to ever have called for a Palestinian state. That's, to me, sounds like <coughs> a reasonable, balanced approach. Yeah, what and, a uh, cowboy. Uh, but I will not allow terrorists.
to determine the fate, as best I can, determine the fate of people who want to be free. Mr. President, thank you very much for talking to You're us. You're welcome. <laughs> it sound. I, I argue strongly that the world was better off because of the decisions that I the door. Damn. We need real reporters, though. We need, you know, that she didn't even ask them that tough. She just kept going. But that wasn't the question I asked. Did you answer the question I asked? I've never seen an American reporter ever do that. Answer the damn question. Was it? Yeah. Just say yes or no. Clinton's great at that, too, though. Yeah. They, he can spin it. They know how to spin it. Hey, Clinton's great, man. Let's not have any bad words about Clinton. This is a Clinton-free bash zone. She, uh, I'll tell you. What you gonna do? You know what I'm doing? I'm getting on my computer and finding out. I'll Google it. Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2. Damn. Now what song's gonna be the hit? Listen. <laughs> 